There are three particular examples I would like to talk about today. One is the Hijra of South Asia. Now the Hijra in India in particular, but throughout the South Asian continent, are uh, understood as the third gender and it has legally been institutionalised in, lin in um, several countries. The Hijra are an ancient population. They are, the Hijra was always a term that was used to, in the early text, to talk about intersex people. But nowadays incorporates transgender and sometimes people who identify as gay as well. So Hijra have a special connection to several Hindu deities who also have what are understood to be hermaphroditic um, characteristics. So Hijra are traditionally intersex um, children who are given to particular Hijra communities at a young age. But these days there are a lot of um, Hijra who are actually born male and then try to seek to transform their bodies through um, surgical castration and so on. But Hydra understand their connection to the Hindu deities as the thing that sets them apart. In Indian society, Hydra are not understood to be either male or female. They are understood to be something above and beyond that. So their connection to the deities give them options to bless people and largely that is what Hydra do. They bless people at their weddings, they bless them at the birth of a child and so on. The Hydra also suffer, despite this, great discrimination and certainly since British colonial rule, the role of the Hydra um, has changed quite radically and they do sort of live on the margins of society. Many Hydra also now do sex work um, and uh, live outside of these small communities. Amongst the Bugis who live in Indonesia and South Sulawesi, there is a group of people who are referred to as Bisu, who are shamanic priests. And these Bisu are understood to be gender transcendent or to have a category that is above gender, so paragender. And in this particular community, there are four other genders as well. So intersex people are understood to be above gender in this particular context. Now the Bisu are, have a, a very um, strong and powerful relationship with the deities, many of whom also, you look to the um, look to the Busu to actually come down in human form and, um, be po and possess these particular shamanic priests. Um, during that time, people in the community can talk to the gods, can be blessed by the gods, can receive all sorts of different sort of um, uh, good, good things at that time. Bisu can dress as men or women, they can do male or female activities and in this particular community intersex people who are Bisu are treated with great reverence. The Kathoi of Thailand, better known as Lady Boys, um, are an, another ancient society or community who include the intersex. Originally Kathoi was a term defined pr primarily for intersex people but now takes in a wider meaning of people who identify as transgender as well as people who identify as gay. Um, Kathoi have again a long history in Thailand but nowadays have a much more populist kind of persona. Many people have heard of the lady boys throughout. Katoi is the word or comes from a um, Buddhist word for the fourth gender. So again, in this kind of a society, there is an understanding of four genders, not two. So Katoi um, do suffer a great deal of discrimination and stigma in Thailand and do not at this point um, have access to opportunities like education, employment, accommodation, and other kinds of things.